One more, one more. All right. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. 6.30, I like to start. We're going to wait on Bill real quick. I want to welcome everybody. It's been a, it's been a few months since we've uh, met in person. It's good to see all the, all the happy faces here on a bright, sunny day. But uh, I want to welcome just everybody to our work session for uh, Monday, April 5th, uh, 2021. It is now 6.30 p.m. And I'm going to get started with our committee slash department report, starting with planning and development. Chairwoman Lisa Newberry. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight, uh, Tim is going to come up and present two cases that we have, and then we'll talk about our uh, uh, zoning map and give us an update on code enforcement. Thank you, Mayor and Council. The first item we have tonight is SU 21-002. The applicant is Mark Nichols. The property owner is Investment Properties 4. Uh, the map and parcel number is R5130001. The present zoning is CH. The address is 37. Three A, which requires to have asphalt or concrete for parking, uh, so he's applied for a special use permit in order to put down a pervious surface. And the applicant is here. If y'all have any questions, the applicant is here. Yes. Oh, would you like to come up? <clears throat> If you'll just tell us what you've got going on there. I'm an audio tech myself. I'm never on this side of the microphone. I'm usually back where he is. Okay, so we have uh, the miniature golf course going in, and the parking is uh, we're wanting to use a permeable parking that is a con a um yeah i get nervous on the side of the microphone i'm much more comfortable on the on the back side of the board uh it's a recycled crushed concrete so that the water perks into the surface and then down into the water table and this is a much more green way to do it and it's uh it fits with our theme of backyard it's a little bit, little bit prettier, a little bit nicer, but the main thing is that it, uh, that it allows the water. You didn't provide a typical section of the of the the material for your pavement. What's uh, okay? What's uh, what? Well, for for construction, we'll still have the silt fence and that sort of thing. This is the permanent uh, parking surface. Um, Matthew, would you bring up a uh, slide two? I believe it is. Also, I noticed your det your detention basin looks like it's only about two feet deep. Well, the uh, this would, according to Georgia Soil uh, Water Conservation, has approved that this would eliminate the need for a detention basin at all, and um, 
the the water would soak in and and then perk through instead of going to um okay that is i'm sorry three please okay that this is a uh, recycled plastic that makes cells that are then filled with the the crushed crush and run concrete so that the water perks through that and and in lieu of a detention pond so that the um, it, the water table is it stays more regular so i understand the, the i understand the concept i was just wondering okay. what what's you, you've got engineering plans for your erosion control what has there been any engineering done to determine how this is going to work? What's its effectiveness? What's yes? A tip from Alcovi Engineering determined he and um, Georgia Soil and the um, uh, gosh, there's there's one more that was involved. It was Gwinnett Water, uh, Water and Sewer. They all determined that a five inch deep, uh, five inches of the crush and run would um, more than handle the the water. And uh, uh, Georgia um, Hydro, um, Geo Hydro, Geo Hydro is the one who did the perk test and found that it would perk um, mm -hmm. more than an inch and a half. So, you know, well more than the requirement. So this would allow plenty of, of storage for the water to then seep in. Okay, and last question. So that none of that was included in in the packet that we received. Tim, is that you have all the information? Is that yes, I have it all, but it's not relevant until y'all approve the special use permit. Right. Has it been used in our area at all, Tim, or is it not this particular design? No. Okay. Okay. But there is uh, two examples of pervious parking. One is a Kroger up in Swanee in North Gwinnett, and the other is a Stone Mountain Park. They've used it for years. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, a concern that was, was brought up that I thought maybe I should address is what about something really heavy driving on it like a fire truck, which Lord, we never want to have a fire truck, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but if we had ambulance, fire truck, something like that, this will hold 250,000 pounds. Uh, so it will more than support a, uh, a heavy vehicle. Okay, any more questions, Bill? I don't have any more questions. Yeah, They are available in, uh, from two all the way to six inches. Um, what, what tip uh, at Alcovi suggested was a two inch base and then a four inch on top of that filled so that we had our, um, we had six inches instead of the, the minimum five. Okay, and Anne, did you have a question? Yeah, I did. Um, so the special use approval is for the materials in the parking lot, not to make this grassy area a parking lot, correct? Um, well, Hmm? Oh. But is the, what is the what right, is the variance? Right now, it's the material. Right now it is a vacant lot. Right. Uh, so he's going to be developing the mini golf course. Right. And part of the mini golf course is the parking lot, and this is what he's asking to use in the parking lot as opposed to concrete or asphalt. So this place where this potential would go down is going to be a parking lot no matter what. The variance Correct. is the use of the material, not that it's a parking lot. Correct. Okay. That's, okay. thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Do any questions from the audience? Okay. Thank you. We'll bring this up on Thursday. I have we'll a, yes. Hey, Thursday. Lisa, I noticed in these that we're not getting like a planning commission recommendation anymore. Which we have at the last couple of meetings. Yeah, I've noticed that too. So what the planning and zoning uh, did recommend to approve this. Correct. Okay. We're real excited how this came up. Because this is going to be something that we have so little kids to do. And adults, we like to play with the too.
Okay, and the next case, The Tim? next item we have on the agenda is V21-003. The applicant is Apex Land Company. The property owner is Farmers and Merchants Bank. The parcel number is LG06001A00. Present zoning is RM8. It's 3.56 acres. And the applicant is asking for relief from section 119 to 13 to reduce the setback from 40 foot to 60 foot I mean from 40 foot to 20 foot and the applicant is here okay does the applicant want to come up and speak mm -hmm. I'm sure we do and the Planning and Zoning Commission did uh, approve this as well or recommend it yeah. yeah what what this is uh, we've got a 28 unit uh, attached townhome 55 or older uh, behind the villas at Loganville and 22 of the of the lots already have 20 foot rear setbacks there's six units at the top of the property that due to the RM8 zoning calls for 40 uh, the preliminary drawings that were submitted 15 years ago when this was zoned showed the 20 all the way around but it didn't come up at that time that that it would need to be reduced at some point to build those those six units the villas at loganville is now 25 foot so it's only a five foot difference from the big yards and houses that are in that subdivision is it, is it 25 to 20 or 40 to 20? 40 to 20 on six lots 28 are already 20 now huh i was talking to my oh, i'm sorry so it's just the six that are on the rear due to the due to the multi-family housing it's supposed to be 40 but this is not multi-family it's single family attached so we're asking for it to be to 20 to, like the other units are everybody have the same same size backyard basically but it's only five foot smaller than the villas at loganville today that has bigger yards and bigger houses on it so how does that change your uh, the streets doesn't change them at all Okay, any, any other questions? Yep. Ms. Thomas, uh, how do you feel about this since you live there? to make his neighborhood more uniform, so oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I think eight letters went out to people in our subdivision, right, Tim? <clears throat> and I heard from three of those people, and they have no problem with it. Um, like I said, I, it doesn't affect our neighborhood. It just brings the new neighborhood more uniform than it would be if we didn't allow him this variance. So, okay. Um, my neighborhood's good with it. Good. I did talk to Dan Curry today. He's the president of HOA out there. Yes, he is. And uh, he said nobody had a problem with it, and they were excited about getting it. Okay. So. We're excited to see these townhomes come. We've been waiting on them, I think, since 2008, Mark. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. And these are going to be for sale? Yes. 55 year old. Same covenants that are in the villas, basically. It's similar, but I'm sure there'd be, after so all these years, I'm sure some changes. Say for sale, you're not going to turn around for rent. No, these are all. Mr. Ford, you know we would be on top of that. <laughs> you wouldn't approve that? Absolutely not. I have a question. Not direct for Robin. My question's for you. This goes back to the, I guess, our last meeting when we did not approve a setback change. And you said that it set a precedent for us in the future. Does this, I would assume, set the same precedent about denying other setback changes? Yes, but this to me presents different. Can you do this? I'm surprised Janice didn't tell me to turn it on. I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And Tim, I'd like to hear your input on this as well, but 
This to me presents different characteristics as to the request for the variance and why he's asking for it that is a bit different than the case from last week. When you look at, at the possibility of setting a precedent, you are looking at the similarity. Um, I think when, particularly with variances, I don't like them generally speaking because people should not ask for variances based on convenience, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I, this does not seem like that type of case to me. I'm not telling you which way to vote, but as far as answering your question. And, and I see it as we're keeping consistency with the 28 units as well as um, the neighbor next door. Well, no, I mean, I, I don't, I agree. I just want to make sure, I mean, you're talking that having a like for like in the future of 55 and up and we have neighboring lots that are shallow or just like these would be, we would have a good, something to stand on. For sure. Especially since it sounds like these setbacks were put in place long ago and things have changed okay. since that, since then. Correct. All right. Thank you. And the other one was for us, variant, I mean, uh, Stormwater related. So. Yes. Yep. Good question. Yes. Okay. Isn't that correct? Correct. But we're doing it. We're doing it on the property, the commercial property, which is going to be eventually a connecting road to the commercial property. But we're putting it as a cul-de-sac for a turnaround rather than just a road dead ending into the commercial property. Right. And this variance that they're asking for is not to, so he can build more condos. It's just to get everything uniform. That's correct. That's correct. And plus they, they want another exit to be able to become, get out another way if they had to. They like to have two ways in and out, not just one if they can get it. necessary so that the emergency vehicles will have a place to get in there and I have talked to a lot of people in that subdivision and not in fact one man called me he was very very nice and after I explained to him what we were doing I had I have had no complaints at all about this everybody's very content with it and I think it's important to say how the neighbors feel about this Yes, and under the uh, development plans that were submitted, they were required by the fire marshal's office to put in that cul-de-sac for fire vehicles to use to turn around uh, since they're, since it would have been a dead-end street if they hadn't. So, so look at, I mean, but how does, how does this 20 feet change that, the plan that you put before us no it it doesn't it doesn't have any effect on the the cul-de-sac right uh but the question was asked about the cul-de-sac sure so that it that has no no that no has no on bearing it. on the variance no okay. okay any other questions from the audience okay thank you tim thank you thank you Mark. we're going to vote on this on thursday mark All right, thank you the next item we have on the agenda is an update to the city's official zoning map. The last update was in 2018, uh, and we just we went in and updated all the rezones and uh, annexations that we've had since that time. So we need to readopt the map to make it the current map. So I'll ask this, all, go ahead. I'll be asking y'all to vote on that Thursday night. It's just a housekeeping? Yes. Okay. Just period lot, periodically, we have to go in and update the official map. Okay. Any questions? Any questions, audience? Okay. The next item I have is just a couple of updates. Uh, we were asked by council to look into some codes in other jurisdictions. And the five that I've looked into all had gravel in their code as far as parking goes, except for one, and that was the city of Brookhaven. They don't allow gravel as far as parking. Uh, but Decatur, Peachtree City, uh, 
Duluth, Monroe, they all allow gravel as a option for parking as far as residential vehicles. Uh, the other update I have is from code enforcement since January. There's been 116 citations written, 43 remain open, 73 are closed, one citation has been issued, and four citations are still pending from last year because courts just opened, so they're still catching up. And that's all I have, unless y'all have any questions. I do. Um, what else did you find after we had that meeting? You said you are going to go look. Did you see anything jumped out at you? On the, the permit, time frame they're all basically the same time that we have uh, I mean if y'all want to look into changing that or have a committee meeting about it we can um, what remind me what is the, the time frame it's six months from the initial time you permit uh, if you don't do any work within six months your permit expires if you stop work during your permit for six months, your permit expires. Uh, but once you initially get your permit, you have six months before you have to do any work. We talked about shortening up to three, right? Yeah, that was the discussion. Okay, well then maybe we should put together a committee meeting. I think it's Danny and Ann and I on the committee. Did and, you see those? And talk about that and come back with recommendations. Did you see anything else when you were looking, anything with teeth to clean up our city? to get rid of these cars in the backyard with seven pounds of, you know, pine straw on them? Well, I mean, you know, like we discussed, if if we go out and tell them they can't park on the grass and they put down gravel, then they're allowed to park on the gravel. Mm -hmm. That's in the code. Once they put down the gravel, then they're no longer in violation. If we change the code, and Robin can correct me if I'm wrong, they would still be grandfathered in because we made them come into compliance. Uh, yeah. If they put up a privacy fence around their backyard, we are not allowed to look over that privacy fence. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I'll, constitutionally, I don't think there's any way around that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. I had hoped you'd come back with more because, you know, we, we went round and round in that meeting. Some of the concerns I had about our city. So I'm okay. disappointed. I'm definitely disappointed. Uh, I've got a question, if you don't mind. If there's a privacy fence from the corner of the house on each side, I understand nothing behind that we can do anything about. But what if there's not a privacy fence, but there's just garbage? And if we can see it from a legal point of view, which is the right of way, we can write a violation okay. notice. Okay. About it. Okay. Uh, but if they park a car in their backyard and they have a six right. foot privacy that. fence, we can't that. look over that fence to see that vehicle. Uh, if we tell them they can't park on the grass, they can put down gravel. Gravel is allowed in the code. Right. They can park on the gravel. If y'all want to take gravel out of the code, y'all can do that. Uh, I would have to get with Robin as far as maybe if there's a time frame on being grandfathered in. I don't know. I I personally just see so much garbage and trash on the side of houses that do not have a privacy fence. Uh, I mean, they're everywhere. Well, I mean, it depends on what you're calling garbage. If, <laughs> if you have a carport, you're allowed to put stuff in your right. carport. That is an extension, that. An extension that. of your house. Outside in the yard, uh, inside the house. You know, you can't have a accumulation of trash. You can't have indoor furniture outside. You can't have appliances outside. Uh, but if your yard is full I'm of to, kids' toys, uh, and trust heaters. me, we've had that complaint before. Yeah, water heaters. No, that's an inside appliance. You cannot have that in your yard. So I could. I know where a bunch are. <laughs> so I could grab them in my backyard. Send me a complaint, and we'll be. <laughs> right. I can grab them in my backyard. Put thirty cars back there. Nothing you could do about it. Not if it's sitting on gravel. Now there was there was one uh, 
Brookhaven actually has in their code how much of your property can be impervious surface or, you know, so we could limit, you know, to where you couldn't gravel your whole backyard or you couldn't asphalt your whole backyard. I mean, I think we all want, everybody wants a cleaner city. Is there, rather than tackling everything, is there one thing we could go after? Like, what's the biggest rub? Because in your example, Jay, I don't think if they gravel the backyard or not, if it's in a six foot privacy fence, you wouldn't be able to touch it, right? Nope. Yeah. So what's the, what's our rub? What do we want to try to go after? What are the, uh, the citations you're writing? What are they mainly for? Cars in the backyard? I mean, I don't, I don't have a breakdown on it today. I can have you that Thursday, but you know, we write a variety. Uh, it's just whatever we run across in a day. He wrote 30 citations this morning, or not citations, notices of violations for business license. So, because it's that time of year now. Uh, I just feel the city's getting more and more dumpy, and we're just spinning our wheels, and nobody seems to care. I do. Well, well I mean, it's not here, per se that we don't care. I have one person. We have 12, over 12,000 residents. I've got one person. Yeah. Well, when I talked to Danny about this. And I've this got a code book this thick. Recently, I was asking him, do we need to add to, add person that's way to it? And his answer was, no, it's not that. There's a lot of admin work. Well, do we need to bring offload some of the admin work? And, you know, it, with every notice he writes, there's paperwork desk paperwork that goes along with that we talked about putting a computer so, in his truck to, so he did the paperwork on the spot so there's yeah there's different things different ideas tossed around what about shorting okay you, you write a citation mayor mayor gets a citation Is, can we shorten up that time frame before because didn't you tell me it was like 30 days it depends on the violation all right, so we could, we could attack it that way then. You can, but you have to give people a reasonable amount of time to comply. Mm -hmm. I couldn't come to your house and your grass is two foot tall, and I tell you, you got 24 hours. No, to I understand. It. That's unreasonable. You yeah. have to give the residents a reasonable amount of time to comply with the violation. Tim, do you know if, you know, when I know maybe 18 months ago, 24 months ago, when we approved the software that went in the police cars that where they could scan the license, which significantly cut down their time on writing tickets and paperwork. Does such a piece of software exist for code enforcement? No. Yeah, I talked to Danny about that same thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we, do have, we do have software that we put all of our violations okay. into, but it's just a database, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I feel bad because the mayor puts on these cleanups and he, he you send in all these pictures of all this trash you're picking up. So you're doing your job. You're getting the churches out there. You're working, giving up your Saturday. And then there's still more. I drive by it every day. So I just wish we could come up with something so we could get back on the right track. Janice, you've been having trouble for 30 years. Right? You have the floor. I'm giving you the speaker system so we can hear out of the Please do. Can I give you an example? Sure, yeah. And I'm not going to say what. There's an old ball. It is new. And it's falling apart. And it's been falling apart for five years. And outside the old ball, I commode. My police officers don't know where I'm talking about. There's commodes out there. There's all this stuff in my backyard. I mean, when, I, when we sit in our backyard, if we have company and we have a cookout, that's what you look at. And when I went out to hang clothes on my clothesline, all these buzzards were flying. And I went back in and I said, help. I think something's dead out here. He said, are you sure? I said, well, there's a lot of buzzards flying around. So I went down to the lady who rents this house and I said, 
have you seen all these buzzards out here lately? Every time I turn around, they're just flying everywhere. She said, I think the vultures are breeding in this old barn. This is what's in my backyard, and we have complained about this for at least 10, 15 years. It's what you see in our backyard. It ain't in our backyard. That's, yeah, that's what you see. When you go out and you go to our swimming pool, or you go to our chairs to have a picnic, and we have company, when they sit down, that's what they see. And I have, I'm not kidding you, at least 10, 15 years. We beg for help with that situation. But right now, it's vultures flying. You're going to come and get them. <laughs> All right. So, so I mean, I guess and you not. hate to complain okay. yes. because these are people we live near. But still, I know you don't have a whole bunch of help. But you, I've complained. Tim knows. Oh, he knows because I've complained to him every time I go see him. And I, I'm not, I love Loganville. I really love this town. And during this epidemic, Carol and I have been out. It's very emotional to me. And we have ridden around in this town and we have seen some of the trashiest places I've ever seen in my life. And we've been living here over 50 years. And I've just never seen things look like some of them look in Loganville. And even when you went out the first time and cleaned next to, when y'all cleaned next to uh, Ingalls, the very next morning, if you saw the trash that was down there, it would make you cry. I cannot imagine people living and not caring about the town they live in. I don't care where you live. If you live in the finest community in the world, the house next to me has been empty. The man's in my nursing home. Nobody's been there and touched the thing. The house is falling apart. It's beginning, Shattered, shattered to fall off the wall. It's beginning to get an odor now. Nothing's being done about it. And I'm going to tell you something. If you think this doesn't touch my heart, you're wrong because this is our town. And we need to be proud. And we need to love where we live. And I agree with you, Ms. Chance. Good and comments. And if I'm wrong, God forgive me for saying this, but I felt like I, I've held it inside for a long time, and I begged for somebody to do something about what's going on in our town, and that's what you guys are up here for. We're going to have a committee if meeting. If you're begging for somebody to do something, we've done something. Me and Lisa have gone out now. Can we clean every house? No, ma'am. But we have gone out there, pick up trash, and it seems like we're the only ones. Uh, I tell you, I drive around some of the towns, and I have to disagree. We don't, I mean, we are not as bad as some towns in DeKalb County. I've, I've, I've seen, and I see Robin shaking her head. Uh, we, you know, just the other day, I went down 20, and I picked up on my own, my own time, picked up. Uh, you don't see, you don't see the type of, of community come together in some other towns like you do in Loganville. Uh, so I'm telling you. So anyway. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And did you have a question? I have, I have two questions actually. Miss Janice or, or Tim, I, obviously, if she says she's been complaining for 10 years, I'm, do you know about the barn? Is that in our jurisdiction? It is in our jurisdiction. And what can we do about it? And if it's not a violation we can see from the road, there is nothing okay. we can do so about it. Where, where I'm going with this is it feels like to me, Sid, but, but, but if 
I feel like we've sat here as a council and gone after you because we have a trashy city. And what I want to know from you is what do you need from us to help clean it up? Because you can only work with what resources you've got. Correct. So I, I would have, like to know. I have one person. So is it more in a, people? In a city of over 12,000. I know. I heard that. Yeah. So what do you, so, you need more people? Yeah, I do. Okay. So what I want from you, if you're okay with this, is if you could on Thursday give us a laundry list. I mean, we're, we're budget season's coming up. I mean, I don't, it's not Tim's fault that we have a trash, no. that there's trash. And if, if your department needs more help, then that's our job is to get you what you need to do your job. So can you, can you come up with something for us? Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Cause you can't do anything about, I, I hear you. There's all eyesores everywhere that are, I mean, we all see them. We drive around here and there's stuff that I know from the code you can't touch. It may be a giant eyesore, but you can't touch it for whatever reason. But I think we need to do better at education about, and if we need to change a code or something in here to make it easier for you to do your job, then I want to know that too. If we just tweak this one sentence, we could do these this much more. So tell, tell us. Okay. Thank you, Ann. Okay, Mr. Ann, that's all I have. That's it. Thank you. All right. Coming down to finance slash economic development, Chairwoman Ann Hutzinger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have got a number of bullet points on my on my uh, section here. So the first two is we have two water adjustments that need to be done. There are a number of pages in your packet that explain what happened. The second one's a little easier to understand. Instead of them using 49 they used 999,949 gallons, which made their bill $32,000. So what we need to do is approve these two write-offs because they really were billing errors. We're not, we're not forgiving the bill. We just, the city overbilled based on a clerical error. So what I would like to do, does anybody have any questions on that? I, I do. How does, how does that happen? I remember when we first got voted in, it happened with the um, high school. Right. How do we overlook I think the first, amount? the second meter wasn't reset. And so, it, but Natalie, can you can you answer that for me, please? Yes, ma'am. Um, so, the, actually, the first one, the ERT, which is what sends the signal to the uh, computer that reads the meters, was actually not changed or wasn't working properly. So, the reader, the reading actually came in from that system improper. And then the second adjustment is actually the meter was put in backwards so if it's put in backwards it reads backwards so it went from a small reading to a really large reading and made it look like we built them that so we build them the customer actually paid it no no ma'am they okay. it's just a write-off right it's just they to adjust it. the billing because we've already built it and posted it to ledger okay. Okay. and now since it's such a large amount i have to have y'all's approval yep. to make that adjustment okay i think the customer saw the bill and went <laughs> right <laughs> immediately called the city and then they realized okay all right thank yes. you natalie so, you want to put this in? Um, I would like, yeah, if nobody has any objection, can we put these on consent? Yeah. You guys okay with that? All right. Okay. Um, moving along, we have uh, the Walton Press contract, um, which is also in your packet to do the magazine printing. It's for uh, $5,595, uh, which I believe is a not to exceed amount. <clears throat> is that paid for with sponsor money? That's a crucial question. Yeah. yeah, I thought so. That's it. Nobody has any questions? Everybody okay with consent? Okay. Uh, next one is the carnival contract. Uh, Christy, do you want to, do you have any information about that? Like what we're doing with food and stuff on that this year? Um, basically, it's the same carnival that's came the past few years, except last year, of course, due to COVID, it didn't come. Right. Um, it'll be here May 13th through the 15th. We allow them, the contract basically just says that we'll allow them the space to set up over here in the track where they have the past few years. And at the end of their week that they're here, they'll give us a certain percentage of their sales. Okay. And that'll be May 13th through 16th of um, this year. Yes. Mm -hmm. they, they'll start setting up like on a Monday and then the fair actually opens up on Thursday. Okay. Thursday through Sunday. There's no rain date or nothing like that. No, sir. They, I mean, we can probably negotiate a rain date with them, but they only do it like as they're coming through Georgia. Like they with a stop, they give us the dates they can come. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
but it doesn't cost us anything really yeah. other than the electricity right. um, and just providing a space for them. Okay. Everybody okay with consent on that one? Do we actually vote on that or does that just need to be read to put in the minutes? Um, like, yeah, we were talking about that before the meeting. Yeah, I thought to we do vote on it? I think so. Okay. Wait till Thursday to vote on it? No, throw it on consent. Oh, consent. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if we vote on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Um, the next two things are on my agenda, but I think they maybe belong on bills because they're public utilities. Um, one is a, a tank maintenance contract. Maybe it's under me because it's a contract. Are you talking about the Yeah. Yeah. It'll be a financial obligation. That's okay. why it was placed under finance. Um, so this is to maintain the Pecan Street water tank. Um, maintenance inspections are performed. It's 14000 It's just part of our annual maintenance fee for that tank. Fourteen two seventy one. I do believe it's a budgeted item. Yes. Correct? Yes. Budgeted. Questions? Consent? Yeah, consent. Okay. Everybody okay consent. with that? That's not fixed. Yeah. That, that wasn't. And I skipped the vehicle replacements because I don't have anything on that. Huh? Yeah, Danny doesn't have it either. And if, if not, we can just hold that till Thursday. And I mean, we'll leave that one on my agenda and we'll deal with it Thursday. If that's okay. Did you submit anything, Ross? Uh, Danny just asked me to give prices on a couple of vehicles, just basic Ford F-150 vehicles. I know uh, planning and development is hurting for at least one vehicle. They could possibly need two vehicles. That's why I think Danny asked me to get a price on just two basic Ford F-150s, non-turbo engines, little V6, floor mats, just regular AM, FM radio, just a real basic, basic truck. Um, they, uh, I did figure in the uh, pricing on the, the lights, you know, a little mini light bar, and for them to be lit up on all four corners so it'd be safe to be parked on the road doing business you know whatever they got to do on as far as in code enforcement uh, or if they're using another department you know they're ready to go and be well lit uh, so people can see them you know oncoming traffic can see them you know when the lights on so it's real basic trucks is what they are okay. says to be paid from insurance proceeds. Huh? Well, uh, part of it, 5,000 of it, not the rest. By, correct. Oh, by part six, of 5,600. Yeah. That was on the vehicle that was involved in a wreck that was total. Um, the insurance uh, paid us 50, right at $5,700. Yeah. So some of that money will be used towards okay. the purchase of the two new vehicles. So that'll be, you know, lower the cost, the overall cost on okay. it. So. I think what I would like to do, if everybody's okay, I'd like to get the actual breakdown of the vehicles and have it for Thursday, and we'll go through it. Is that okay with y'all? Are you giving Loganville Ford a shot at this? Uh, well, I got the uh, the basic um, government pricing through Allen Vigil Ford. Um, yes, I can go to Loganville Ford and say, hey, this is what I've got from Allen Vigil, the government pricing. Can y'all meet or beat? Yeah. So they might, they might could beat it just a little bit. Yeah, you know, Brad you, always said he would. If we yeah. want to go that route. If we're going yeah. to promote by local, we got to give them a shot. You know, no problem there. But like I said, I had to start yeah. somewhere. And they, Allen Vigil does the pricing on the okay. SUVs, the government right. pricing, right. that kind of stuff. And it's just easier to start with them. Allen Vigil is a state contract? Yeah. They, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, what kind of timeline did they give you for these? Uh, as far as being able to get them? way he talked, I mean, it was no problem on the F-150s. Okay. So, Will you come back on Thursday to yeah. see if, if Logan will forward, you know, what? Sure, I can, I can run down there. Prices. Hopefully tomorrow I'll That'd have time. I can run down there and talk with him. So, okay. be glad to. Ken Yeager. Ken Yeager. Okay. I sure will. Okay. I will go by and talk to him. Now, just just out of curiosity, if we go off-state con off contract, 
to go talk to Logan before. Do we have to get three competitive bids? I'm not aware that we do. You're going to have to go through the bidding process. Uh -huh. um, it, it will add layers to what you're talking about. So even yeah. if you go talk to Logan before, it doesn't matter. You're still going to have to put it out to bid. That's one of the benefits mm -hmm. of going through the state procurement right. process. That's what I understood. So. And I'm fairly certain that every dealer is given the opportunity they to, are, if they want to, yes, to participate in the government procurement. Yeah, and why they don't, I don't know why they don't all participate. Because know, they so. don't want to get the they prices that others are wanting. Or not they do it some, they do on some vehicles. Right. Different, yeah, different vehicles go to different dealers. Yeah. So, Robin, what you're basically saying is just stick with what you got, right? I'm just saying that if you want to look at Logan Ford, you've got to put it out to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and this is something that, you know. Yes. Thank, Thank you. Yes. Yeah, well, so what do you guys want to do council-wise? Do you want to put, do you want to put it out to bid in Loganville and have them get Two other bids for I think what what is the need? How quick do we need these? Because the state has already put them out for bid, which is why we don't have to go out for bid. But if we go out for a bid, we might find someone that comes in five dollars cheaper. Well, planning Correct, Lisa. needs like right now needs at least one. Like so right if the, now. If that's the need, then we need to go to state contract and just trust trust the contract, is my opinion. I mean, state contract exists for a reason. I, I agree. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it takes the red tape off. And yes. But I do agree with Jay that anything that we could possibly buy and give a local anybody a chance, we should. That's right. All right. So I still would like to table it to get the details on the trucks and talk about use. And I know we're going to go to, I guess, Kim first and then where the other one's going to go. So I'd like to table that until Thursday. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Um, and then the last thing I have is a survey update. Uh, the survey closed uh, midnight on the 31st. There were 944 people who participated, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, they are working up the reports, and I hope to have them for you on Thursday. So you I'd like to leave on, that on my agenda. You're have what on Thursday? Pretty much the detail? Um, my hope is to have the initial reports publishable, not just for council, but that I'll have the link available for the public, and we can post that. On Thursday. On Thursday. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Anything quick, else? quick thing, really quick. Um, on the agenda, we have the Fuel Master upgrade. Ross, did we get anything on that? Um, well, and I've got paperwork with me. Um, as far as pricing and and what they would do and that kind of stuff. Uh, as far as um, what this is about, it's the uh, the fuel master, uh, for those that y'all don't, don't know what the fuel master is at our fuel, fueling depot, that's how it, uh, it's a system that starts, turns the uh, uh, fuel pumps on and off. It uh, keeps up right now, it's just a real basic system. Keeps up with the, uh, uh, the operator of the vehicle uh, and um, you know he puts in that mileage. A lot of times they put it in wrong, but, uh, and uh, it, it that and it turns the pump on, and then shuts off after a certain amount of time, and it sort of it helps us somewhat keep up with uh, how much fuel we use. Uh, it's it's got a lot more capabilities that could help us keep up and keep track of vehicles when they have a problem, when they have a check engine light. Um, uh, other problems, uh, it can alert me or, you know, anybody in my office, you know, if it's broken down immediately, it can send me an email, say, hey, unit number uh, 72 is, is shut down for a reason. Uh, you know, I don't have to wait on the phone call necessarily, you know, you know, be sending a record after it and go, go get it. Uh, it'll help us also keep up. It, it takes the error, uh, operator error away uh, when the, the driver of the vehicle pulls up to the fuel pumps, it'll automatically start communicating mileage and that kind of stuff. And then you, you simply just, just turn it on with the key, the pro key that every vehicle is issued. 
uh, and uh, the mileage is already entered in, bam, 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 and it starts working, the pump starts working. Uh, the rest of all this is upgrading the outdated fuel pumps. Uh, what we have out there now is old 1950s technology where it's a vacuum type pump and it pulls from the from the fuel tanks. Slow and hard to get parts for these type pumps. Uh, well, because they haven't made and they're not making them. Uh, what we have now what, in all the gas stations is submersible pumps. Uh, the, they're, down, they're in the tank, the fuel pump's kind of like your car. Your fuel pump's in your fuel tank and it pushes it at a great, you know, good pressure, good and steady, way more reliable. That's what all your fuel stations have now. Uh, and that's what we're talking about doing, getting it in compliance with NFPA 30 and 31. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there. The containment uh, for the piping is non-existing. Um, there's supposed to be some emergency cutoffs that are out there. It's supposed to be out there that are not. So it's it's now, or you know, it, it's sometime in now or in the near future, we're gonna we, we got to do something, or you know, rethink having a fueling station for the city. Uh, it benefits the city big time for us to have a fueling station up, uh, where the guys can come in, say they're in emergency calls at night, but their trucks need more fuel. They try to pump them, up, they try to fill them all up at night before they go home. But you get a call at two o'clock in the morning at night, or they've already on a job site and they need fuel. Police, it's all the time they're having to run in there and fuel up their their uh, tanks. So there's there is a big need in in doing this. So, hey Ross, is that a two hundred gallon? Pardon me. Is that a two hundred ga uh, a gallon tank? You guys got it's what? What's the? Uh, I believe tank. those are. I think it's five hundred. There, there's five. one. Uh, the diesel is probably only about a five hundred, but the. Uh, the um, the fuel, the gasoline, I believe it's at least 1500 1500 okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, and Jeremy's priming the pump, having to prime the pumps prime the once pump a week. Time. Yeah, he has to do that all the time, comes yeah. in on his own time. Well, Jeremy Armstrong yeah, comes yeah. in all I'm, the time. I'm hearing a lot of reasons why we need to do this, but the one thing that caught me is what you just said, that we don't have any emergency shutoff valves. And so stuff like all that. we need is one accident, what? and it's yeah. going to cost a lot more than what the cost of this Correct. is. Correct. You get the EPA involved and... Mm -hmm. you know, and this is part of SPLOS money. So yeah. the, trans um, the transportation side of this boss. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys okay with consent on that? Yes. Okay. okay. And, and I understand why I got confused because I looked at tanks because I didn't have the vehicles and then I went to tanks and so Bill, I handled one of your things. Thank you. you. Sorry Thank about you, that. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, the fuel goes on consent. We did the CAG and Mr. Mayor, that's all I've got. All right. Thank you. All right, coming down to public safety, Chairman Jay Bolin. Thank you, Mayor. Before I forget, Melanie Long will give a presentation Thursday night. Um, so we need to add that to the agenda. I don't want to get into it too much. So I'll just save that for you, Melanie, Thursday night, okay? And the other thing I have is Thursday night at 5, or yeah, 5, I am going to join a committee. A lot of local cities, Social Circle, Monroe has been have been looking at uh, – to review the marijuana possession ordinance. Now that doesn't mean marijuana is going to be legal here yet, but I wanted to go because it says here, this committee would analyze fines and other penalties regarding marijuana possession. It does not mean marijuana would be legal in the city. So I guess what we're going to do is get together. This is in Monroe, but they invited me to come as a public safety chairman to discuss marijuana fines, penalties. Um, I think what they're doing, and Robin, you could probably jump in here. I think they're looking at trying to offload a lot of the court cases, correct? I don't know because I don't know exactly what the topic for the meeting is. I know that the trend is to decriminalize. I mean, there are several jurisdictions in the metro area that have done that. Right. That's a, that's an email we got from John Howard. Right. Mayor. Yeah, you and I did. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I'm so gonna I'm going to go up Thursday. Oh, you, you go. I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. I'll probably I'm gonna be here. I might be a little late, but I'll, that's where I'm gonna be. Okay. It's just I just want to go and hear them out and just kind of see what they're saying. You know, I think whether you like it or not, within a couple of years, it's gonna be legal all over the United States of America because there's too much money involved in it. It's just a fact. Um, so I just thought I'd go and just hear them out. And wait, when did you say it is, Jay? What? When did you say it is? I'll be there Thursday night. I got two meetings this month: wow. Thursday night at five, and then a little later this month in uh, April. I think it's like April twenty eighth, was it? Um, 
What's that? The next meeting, there's two meetings. Well, I'll keep everybody posted. So that's all I have for you. What I could do is I, I'll, I, I got the email from John. I'll, I'll forward it to you guys so you could, you know, attend. Uh, on the record, I am not going to attend because I don't want to listen to it. Yeah, uh, you know, even though you know, you know, Mayor John Howard has invited me, but I guess you guys could go and and hear it. I'm against any drugs. Anyway, that's just my. Opinion. All right, go ahead, Mr. That's all. That's all you got. Thank you. Uh, going down to public utilities, Bill Duvall. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thanks again, Ann. <laughs> so the first item was for the uh, Pecan Street uh, Utility Service. That's on consent, and I don't think anybody's got any issue with that, right? Um, the second item we have is um, what Danny referred to as an emergency um, emergency city call repair. I don't. It's on a chart, Chandler Hawk. They had a couple of uh, pay. pay sections of the pavement that uh, uh, failed and he's got to get out there and do a uh, deep base uh, pavement so he's asked us to uh, go ahead and approve that work it's not to exceed to 25,000 I would recommend that we do that any, any discussion nope. yeah that consent thank you consent. and then um, the other thing is um, We've got uh, utilization of federal, we use, the next one's the Title VI um, Civil Rights Act agreement that uh, it was signed in 2018 by the council, it's time to renew it. Um, Title VI handles discrimination um, as part of receiving federal funds in which, like, you know, we are receiving the grant from ARC, that's federal funds. We have to be certified, which is called LAP, Local Administration Projects. Uh, Certified, Robbie handles that for us. He's been to all the training. Anyway, we've uh, all it is is just a renew. We just need to sign this, and uh, I suggest we put this on consent. Any so questions? You just you just looking for a signature. Correct. Okay. Consent. Consent. Uh -huh. consent. And the 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 last thing I have is this um, Oak Grove Road stormwater prob problem. It popped up. There's a. It's, it's, apparently, it's been an issue over time. It's there, right uh, in front of the CubeSmart um, um, storage units and all. There's water that's not not being maintained, and or you know, not, it needs to be repaired. And it's um, pavements tearing up. And so, what Danny's talked to uh, our engineer, Kekin Wood, I guess, looked at it and said, you know, the way to fix it, we've got some stormwater management that we have to do. We have got to dig dig out the pavement down to the base and build that back. Um, so we'd like to move forward with that. And that's a uh, estimates not to exceed 50,000. Anything you want to add on that, Brandon? Is that about all of it? Mayor, Mayor Council. Um, yeah, I'd like to add that this is LMIG funding. This is the remaining funds that we're going to be using from the 2019 to 2020 LMIG. Um, so we'd like to use that to, to fund this project. Okay. Any comments? Okay. Put on consent? consent. You say it's not to exceed, but this says rounded funds. So I guess we make the motion it'll be a not to exceed motion. Yeah. But okay. A, a quick question, Brandon, while you're up there. Um, two things. The To back up the Chandler Hawk Road Paving Project, who who's doing that? Oh, we are. We are? Mm-hmm. So we won't run into the issue that we had with the other lady with the big the lip. No, this no. is digging out the whole pavement. Okay, yeah. okay. And number two, how are you doing? I'm good. You feeling in for Chris? You know, you, you know, taking over. You feel good? <laughs> I do. How, how how often do you call Chris? Not as often as I did. Good for you, man. So you're settling in pretty good. I think so. All right. Good job, Randy. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's big shoes to fill. I got to check in on you. I used to be public utility. So did you? You got to check in. That's a tough department. That is tough. That's an underrated department too. <laughs> You get what you want. You know, when I first took over at Public Utilities, they told me, Christy and Aunt Atron, they told me, we'll give you everything you want. Well, you got to give us everything you want unless you want the brown stuff rolling down the street. You got to give them everything they want. Uh, that's all, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Good way to finish. All right. Uh, coming down to uh, Public Works slash Facilities Chairwoman Linda Dodd. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, I don't know if any of you had your packet ahead of time. 
But uh, we, uh, Miss Peggy uh, Berg, is wanting to donate a pond that is part of her uh, property back behind her house. And uh, we sent out for stage planning to do a inspection of the pond. And uh, I'm not going to read this whole letter, but we got a letter from Jim, who's the senior vice president of Precision Planning, and he made a comp made comments about it. There's also pictures that you can see of the pond. Also, uh, he said that in order to get the pond up to code, uh, it would cost us between forty to forty-five thousand uh, dollars. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. The spillway is in bad shape. Uh, there's a lot of trees that need to come down. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, he said that because it is such a small space around the pond, uh, it really wouldn't give us any green space for us to have a walking trail or anything like they have like at Meridian. Uh, so it wouldn't really benefit the citizens of Loganville to be able to take use of this pond. So uh, according to what I've read here and going by what he is saying, and I know Bill, uh, I talked to Bill a little earlier before the meeting, and he said that he also talked to one of his engineers about this. And uh, my conclusion is that we don't accept the, no, the, do, the, no, the uh, donation of the pond because it would be a, we wouldn't be cost-effective to the city to have the pond. Because once we took possession of it, then you'd have to make payments to keep it up all the time. So, and I don't know if they want the same thing. Yeah, well, I mean, from, from my standpoint, I mean, uh, I work with uh, dam engineers all the time. And um, it's a joke. Um, <laughs> no, but in the, in, the, in, the, in the engineering field for dams, you have geotechnical engineers and you have civil engineers. And, um, you know, they, you, you, there's a lot of liability involved with it. I mean, the trees out there are a good size. Look at the photo. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking those trees are 12 14 inch diameter, 16 inch diameter or something. You just, you know, that you have to remove those. You have to remove them below the surface. You have to dig those out and you'd have to do them all at once. I mean, you, you, you can't go out there and just take it and again, you gotta repair it. So I, I think Jimmy's estimate, I will say is, it, I think it's potentially low just from what I've seen. Um, and Jimmy Barker, you know, I mean, good, good report. Um, Agree with what he had to say. I'm just I'm concerned that it might even be low. Um, well, Peggy is here. The applicants are here, by the way. Yeah. So I don't know. Sure. Danny, if you want to say anything, if you if you come, come on. You know, we thought we might donate it to the city. Uh, if you don't want it, and you think it's going to cost too much. That's fine with us too. We don't. It didn't really matter. We're just going to try to donate donate it to the city. I had to put a walking trail around it or whatever. So uh, it doesn't matter to us. Okay. Whatever you want to do. I think it's a generous offer. Thank you. Yes. Can we accept the donation and leave it as is, or do we have to do something to it? Like to bring it to, I mean, the pond could sit there just like it is for a while. Yes? Sure. It, it absolutely could. But there are some major issues that wow. will have to be, uh, because the spillway is already, it actually, there's, no, I know. I read the report. Yeah. So, I mean, there's things that we, if we take it, then there's problems and issues come up that have to be worked with. Right. I understand. So, if we want to take it on and spend taxpayers' money to fix it, yeah. And we can do that. Jimmy also says it would require the acquisition of additional easements. Yeah. By other property owners. So, we don't want that. Okay. So, do we want to vote on it on Thursday night? Yes. No. This. Vote on Thursday night. Yes. Okay. Sure. All right. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll take the action, uh, Peggy and Danny. Uh, we'll yes, vote on it. You. Council will vote on it Thursday night. Yeah, we appreciate that. Mayor, that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Uh, human resources, uh, economic development, chair. Uh, what? Oh, human. Danny Ford. <laughs> Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, I have to. Uh, thank you. <laughs> All right, city manager's report. He just wanted me to let everyone know that he is on the mend and that he will be here Thursday. And he thanks you all very much for all the thoughts, the prayers, the emails, the texts, the phone calls, the goodies. 
All right. City Attorney, Robin Webb. Well, Danny remarked to me the other day, he said, you know, it's alcohol, so we have to do it over and over again. That's right. <laughs> alcohol ordinance. <laughs> yes. And the sign ordinance are two things that, that always require multiple visits. Uh, so I sent you all the proposed amendment to the alcohol ordinance. Um, this one builds on what we did last month. This allows alcohol vendors from other jurisdictions to obtain a permit to sell alcohol at special events on city-owned property and in the Main Street District. So in other words, if someone has an alcohol license from the city of Monroe, they would be able to come to the city of Loganville and apply to be able to sell alcohol at an event driven on the green. I'm just throwing that out as an example. That vendor would be limited in what they could sell as to what they are licensed to sell in this example in the city of Monroe. So if that vendor was only allowed to sell beer in the city of Monroe, that's all they would be able to sell in the city of Logan. The vendors would have to also obtain a special event permit from the state of Georgia and would have to present both valid licenses slash permits to the city when the vendor applies for the special event permit. The, this also, I want to be clear, it, the amendment will allow anyone who gets a special event permit that's resident and what we're calling non-resident vendors to sell beer, wine, and distilled spirits. So that is a change from what was in there before. The other big change in there is that all vendors on city-owned property and in the Main Street District will be required to sell and serve alcohol in special city cups. The reason for that is that the police officers, code enforcement, can readily see where the alcohol is coming from, and it helps code enforcement know who is licensed to sell those drinks. Now, there are, people are allowed to bring coolers to some of the events on city properties. So, you know, you may not catch all of it, but at least you would have a clearer idea of how much is being sold by the vendors during those special events. So Robin, we'll have to, what you're saying is that if a vendor, cause I've, I've been to a few, a few events in Monroe where you've had the, the, the beer truck there basically and they provide their own cups. So what you're saying in, under this ordinance, we're providing the cup and they pour it in our yes. city. Yes, cup. and right? you are providing the cup, but it will be part of the license fee, it will not be at an expense to the city. Okay. So when we voted a couple of years ago to change it so that in the Main Street District, you could walk around with the can or a cup. Mm -hmm. So this overrides the can and the cup. It does to the extent of any alcohol that's served during special events. What it doesn't touch is people who bring alcohol into those areas on their own. Okay. That still, there's still the rule that you can't have glass out there, even if you're not serving sure. the city cup. So if we had a restaurant, someone could walk across the street with their can or cup to the town green? Yes. Okay. And there's not really a way, at least that I've seen, to capture that instance unless we make that part of the permit for the restaurant but I, I may have misunderstood what you meant like if, if they're walking from somewhere outside of Main Street District no I'm talking about inside Main Street District. oh then yes, yes that, that all of it must be sold and served or served I guess within one of these city cups okay and the, and the main the Main Street District includes the our track yes Whatever sure. that defined space is. Okay. okay. Yes. And Christy. it also includes all city owned property, just so that we're clear. Christy Downers, you're good with this, with the ordinance for our events moving forward? Is that? Christy Daniel has been the main proponent of That's this, right. the main That's right. driver. That's right. 
Yes, and just so you all know, I have several vendors, or food truck vendors, or a wine wagon that have contacted me wanting to come, come and serve alcohol at our events, but because of our ordinances, they were not allowed to. Um, the cup is um, something similar that, to that Monroe does. They do allow their vendors to have the cups to pour the alcohol in so that they can monitor it. So I think it's something that we can definitely try to see how it works out. Um, and, you know, maybe something we have to readdress again in the future and take that off because I don't know right now how they work. Because, of course, Monroe also requires their um, restaurants downtown to have the cups as well. So I think that's a big advantage for them. Um, we do not have that right now, but we can definitely try it out with our vendors to see how it works out and address it again in the future if it does not. So. Yep. All right. Um, I'm fine with it. Is this something that we can put in the consent or does the vote thing on Thursday? You can definitely put it on consent if everyone's in agreement. Yeah, Bill, go ahead. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. Consent. Okay. Consent. The one other thing that that we need to put on the agenda that's under my section tonight, but that we'll flush out and have before you on Thursday night, is the schedule of fees. That is something that the council needs to approve periodically at the time that those fees may change, which that hasn't happened in, in quite some Schedule time. Schedule fees of what? To get the alcohol permits. Okay. And we've talked about how much that may or may not be. So what we'll do is either Tim and Christy or together we'll come up with an updated schedule for you all to vote on on Thursday night. Got it. Okay. That worked. Thank you. Great. Anything else? That's all I have this evening. All right. All right, folks, uh, I think that is that is the end of our meeting today. I am going to encourage everybody, please come out on Thursday. We're going to have a busy a busy uh, day on Thursday. We got the YMCA. You guys know we got a YMCA coming in Walk County, and they're going to be here to report on the YMCA. I'm part of, I'm part of, the, of the leadership team, and we also got uh, Stacy Brown, the executive director of the library. She's going to talk to us about the library, uh, all the great things that they're doing. And this is the most important thing. Leave the best for last, right? The annual city report. How about that? It's going to be reported by your truly mayor. We're going to talk about our city and what great year we had in 2020. Uh, state, uh, state, state of the city. State of the city. It's coming up. Our annual state of the city. And boy, we got a good city, don't we? Right, Dennis? We got a good city. I know. I know it's a little trashy, but it's not as bad. It's not as bad as it is. All right. Hey, thanks all for coming out. It's so nice to be back in there. <laughs> Thank you. It's glad to be back. I'm glad. With that being said, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. It's all in favor. Signify saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. It is adjourned. Have a good night.